Prices of Rolex on the secondary market had begun to decline over the past years and that is a clear indication that What's up people, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I last went into a Rolex boutique. To think about it, it's been a while since I last chat about Rolex watches. This made me think if I'm, who allegedly a fanboy of Rolex, no longer that interested or attracted to the brand. Are the masses feeling the same and if Rolex watches are still a good buy? To determine that, I went to check out the new Rolex GMT Master 2, aka the Bruce Wayne, and asked what ChatGPT thinks about it. The Rolex GMT Master 2, reference number 126710GRNR, aka the Bruce Wayne, or I prefer to call it the Dark Knight, was launched at Watches and Wonders 2024. If you've missed my 4-part videos on Watches and Wonders 2024 and would like to check out what other new releases are there, the link of these videos are in the description below. I won't beat around the bush on this one. The new GMT Master 2 is old, boring, unimaginative and pretty cool. I'm Batman. Confused? Let me explain. The GRNR, which also stands for Gerrit Noah, is basically like every other 126710. It has an oyster steel case made out of 904L steel in a monoblock design with brush polish. It measures 40mm in diameter, 12mm thick and 48mm lock to lock. In between the crown guards is a screw down crown with the engraved crown and three dots representing that it has a trip lock triple waterproofness system. The Oyster bracelet here sits in between the 20mm lock width, tapers down to 15.5mm ending with the Oyster claps. Rolex really do love their Oysters, <laughs> which again, it's all pretty standard here. Inside the closed case bag is the in-house 3285 caliber automatic movement which has a plus minus 2 seconds a day accuracy. It has a paramagnetic blue paracom hairspring and a high performance paraflex shock absorbers. Again, it's all pretty standard here. What is not standard is what sits underneath the sapphire crystal and the bezel. The black and grey serochrome insert in ceramic bezel has molded numerals and graduation, with a split of colours separating day and night at a 6th and 18th hour position. The polished notches on the bezel resembles the minute in an hour as there are 60 notches in total. The black lacquer dial here has the words GMT2 in Rolex corporate green matching the GMT hand, whereas the rest of the words are in white. The green words on the black dial only exist in this Bruce Wayne model. All the hands and markers are with loom and in white gold. The date is at the 3 o'clock position with black numerals on a white backdrop enhanced by Rolex typical magnifier. Whilst the GRNR is just a change of colour, I can understand its appeal. Among all the complications in the professional segment of Rolex timepieces, the GMT function is perhaps regarded as the most practical and the best value for money simply because I don't think anyone will go diving with a Rolex or use a chronograph to time things. Yet it is retailed at this price. The Pepsi, Batman or Sprite, which is my favourite among them all, can sometimes be regarded as a little loud. For something more low-key for an everyday use, or something appropriate for a black tie event or even a funeral, the Bruce Wayne makes sense. So which GMT2 is your favourite? Do let us know in the comments below. As always, Rolex finishing is consistently impeccable. But are they still a good buy? I personally don't think that Rolex is the king anymore. That crown goes to people like you and me, the consumers. Gone were the days where one can walk into an AD and buy any Rolex they want, and with a discount. Gone were also the days where one would walk into an AD only to be greeted with an empty case on display. The scarcity of Rolex watches at retail and the inflated prices on the secondary market have paved the way for the rise of independent brands. Consumers become frustrated and began to look elsewhere. To be honest, unlike Rolex, which offers the same boring design, independent watchmakers offers greater variety, more innovative design and often better value for money. If you don't believe me, check out some of these independent brands that I've reviewed and see for yourself. 
Prices of Rolex on the secondary market have begun to decline over the past years, and that is a clear indication that Rolex watches are no longer that desirable as before. But still, most watch collectors, if not all, will have at least one Rolex watch in their collection, like it's a prerequisite to be regarded as a serious collector. That just shows how strong the brand is, but that's just my opinion. I hope I'm not wrong. Since it's just my opinion, I then asked ChatGPT if Rolex watches are still a good buy in 2024, and the answers took me by surprise. In less than 80 words, ChatGPT said, In 2024, Rolex watches remain a good buy due to their brand prestige, high resale value, and durability. Popular models like the Submariner and Daytona often appreciate in value, driven by controlled supply and strong demand. Despite rising prices, Rolex watches are timeless investments, especially for collectors. While other luxury brands and smartwatches offer competition, Rolex retains its iconic status. Buyers should focus on specific models for investment potential, while enthusiasts enjoy them for their quality and craftsmanship. Crap. If you think ChatGPT is right and watch chat is wrong, or vice versa, let us know in the comments below. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to support the channel, and I'll really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, take care now, bye bye now.